Welcome to today's webinar. It's all about optimizing spaces and modernizing workplace experiences. So today's webinar topic was actually triggered by a recent announcement from the Canadian government that all federal workers are going to need to start coming back into the office three days a week. Now, we're not here to, to, to debate the policy. Um, I think that would take us all a lot more time. But instead, we just want to discuss the impact of having everyone back in the office and how we should start thinking about optimizing the workplace. So I'm joined today um, by a couple of guests, and we will get started here. First is Andrew um, from the Treasury Board of Canada. Also with us is Grace George, who is a senior uh, solution consultant from ServiceNow, and she'll be demonstrating some of the software later on here. But why don't we we jump in here, Andrew? Can you uh, introduce yourself and your your role? Yeah, sure. Uh, hi, everybody. Um, as Scott mentioned, my name is Andrew Gall. I'm the manager for uh, digital solutions for the uh, Treasury Board of Canada. And um, yeah, our team is responsible for uh, a lot of the off the shelf solutions for uh, the Treasury Board. And one of those solutions is now ServiceNow. Great. Well, first of all, again, thank you, Andrew, for taking the time today. We appreciate you taking an hour out of the day and, and discussing this topic with us. So I, I think what's fascinating about today's topic is it is something that people around the globe are, are grasp, grappling with right now. Um, how do we get people back in the office? What's the impact of having people in the office? A lot of organizations have optimized space, let go of real estate. A lot of people get hired during um, COVID and uh, they don't even know if they have enough space. So this was, a, I think, a problem that, Andrew, you faced even before the government mandate. Can you give us just a bit of background about the the Treasury Board and, and when you headed down the path of trying to solve this problem? Yeah, um, so essentially where we were was... Um, even before a return to office uh, began, there was uh, a look, a hard look on the department side with um, the real estate that uh, that we had and the reality with uh, everyone moving to a hybrid uh, work model was that we probably had more real estate than we required. Um, and, but as part of that, if we reduce to one uh, building, if everybody that worked in the department came in at the same time, it was going to be um, not enough desks for uh, people. So it was something that we were looking about as we were trying to divest ourselves of the building. Um, we needed a better solution than we had currently for uh, booking desks because essentially we were using a, um, a Microsoft Outlook um, system where we had all the desks basically and meeting rooms entered as um, uh, as meeting rooms and mm -hmm. you, you book them that way and it it worked you know reasonably well but it was it was not very intuitive it was not very useful if people were double booked it didn't really always stop you sometimes it did sometimes it didn't there ended up being always conflicts at the office when people showed up to the same desk and, and started, you know, it's my desk, no, it's my desk. And, um, it, it's, it's something that does definitely get people, um, engaged, yeah. <laughs> I guess you could say, um, their, their space is kind of, um, is, is, is something that, that is definitely a hot button issue with a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it's something we needed to manage it better. Yeah. Yeah. I think, Again, it's an area where a lot of people are struggling is if you finally do get me or, you know, somebody to come into the office and when they get there, they start having conflict around where to sit or they all are sitting in the break room because there's no place anywhere else. Um, it, it just gives them reason to go home. Yep. So, can you tell us a bit about the size of your organization and your buildings just relative to some of the other agencies that might be here on this call today? Yeah, Treasury Board is about um, varies between 2,800 to 3,000 people, depending on uh, contractors and, and and what have you that are that are on site. Um, so it's 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 not a huge organization, um, and we've got uh, currently we're in a building with about eight uh, eight floors. 
so we had two buildings, uh, one at 90 Elgin Street and then another one at uh, 219 Laurier uh, that we had at least, I think it was six or seven, six or seven floors. And it was just going to be too much for what we needed with mm -hmm. people on a, on a hybrid uh, hybrid place, uh, in a hybrid place. So uh, that was, uh, they decided to divest 219 and, and put everybody into uh, the eight floors that we had. Uh, knowing that we had enough space if uh, people were coming in on alternate days and, and what have you. So... Um, we uh, we looked at it. We looked at things, and we landed on uh, WSD with uh, ServiceNow as the solution that we wanted to implement for our uh, desk booking software. Cool, great, excellent. So, as you think about the recent announcement by the government, um, how are other agencies reacting to it? How are organizations starting to prepare for that? <laughs> um, for, again, for the folks on the call here, what should they be thinking about? Yeah, I, I mean, I think obviously the, the software is a big piece that, that you need to look at, but honestly, the, the um, communications and change management uh, is actually probably the bigger piece. Um, we actually had quite a bit of success with ServiceNow. We, we uh, delivered in about six months uh, WSD, uh, which was very... Um, very busy schedule for us and it um we we managed to pull it off in six months which was which was really great mm -hmm. uh, but honestly your resources uh, almost need to go more into communications and change management because people are very invested as i said in their space and getting a change around uh, the culture of uh, desks and a lot of these sectors had had um, dedicated spaces for years and um, not just moving to hybrid was a, a difference but not having a space to call your own uh, that was you know you had your plants and your posters and you know uh, your various um, knickknacks that you had in, in your space we basically had to depersonalize everything and it's 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 a full hoteling uh sort of solution now that um there's not a lot of personality around the, the desks and that was difficult for a lot of people to deal with yeah yeah i can imagine um because I, I would think especially within the public sector there um you have a lot of rules or, or regulations in terms of what kind of space you get and who gets an office and who doesn't and um yeah all that can be quite <laughs> <laughs> that that's fair it, it, it was a difficult um needle to thread um you know there was um some folks like in it a lot of us came from the contracting world and we're used to living out of a briefcase other people have been a policy analyst for 10 15 years and have been in the same desk since they've come into the building so you know we we understood that and and you know that type of change is hard and um it's, it's very personal for a lot of people. And that's why I said the software was actually almost the easy part. It's, it's you definitely want to look at your communications and change management. And, and also, frankly, just what your footprint of the building, like your uh, floor plans, what equipment is there, what's working, what do you want to record in service now as far as, you know, I've got two monitors, they're two ultra wides. Uh, or it's one ultra wide, or it's two normal monitors, uh, you know, secret network, uh, different things that are on the desk. Yeah. That type of thing is all stuff that you need to um, look at, as well as has people taken it on themselves to reconfigure their space somewhat and, and not tell the higher ups that this office is no longer an office, it's a meeting room. And they've, you know, dragged chairs in and it's not being used as an office, it's a meeting room. So we had a lot of floor walking and, and stuff to do to confirm that the floor plans were actually the floor plans. Mm -hmm. And it actually bore some semblance of reality as to what was out there. Cool. Good. So what experience do the employees have today? Do they, um, so that they need to book a desk or an office before they come in? 
Um, yeah. Do they do that on the day of? Do they, do they do it the week before? What's that look like? Uh, we have pretty much, it, it goes pretty much from soup to nuts as far as how people do it. There's a lot of people that do recurring bookings. Um, uh, at, at, at times, we actually had to readjust some of the stuff that we had done in service now that we had people, we had a limit of uh, 30 days on the bookings that you could make because the fact that people would, you know, leave the department and not cancel their bookings and all that sort of thing. So we're like, okay, 30 days makes sense to us. What we then discovered was people were so invested in their desks, they were going in and booking 30 days and then going in again and booking 30 days and going in again and booking 30 days. And we had people booking out to 2027. And we had to adjust within service now to say, okay, we mean 30 days. And if your user ID is tied to something more than 30 days, we had to cancel those reservations because people were gaming the system by going in repeatedly and just bookending their, their reservations on top of each other because they wanted that desk for four years or something. Um, so it was like, guys, like, come People on. We'll find a way to game whatever system you get. Yeah. So, you know, there was a bit of the gaming of the system and, and, and stuff going on. Um, but it's, 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 it's one of those things that, uh, that we adjusted and, and had a look at. Uh, a lot of people book, we, we rolled out the uh, mobile application at the same time as the um, web software uh, so that people, if they forget to book a desk, they can be on the bus or the train and say, oh, I need to book my desk. And um, the mobile application is being used quite a bit um, by people just to uh, either confirm where they're sitting or, um, you know, they, they forgot or a lot of people are, are, are using a very flexible schedule. So they might come in a Monday and a Wednesday one week and a Tuesday and a Thursday the next week. And inevitably you kind of forget what desk, if did, did I get a desk? Did I have the wrong desk? And a lot of people are using the mobile app um, to reconfigure sort of what they're doing. And that's been a success uh, quite a bit as well. Uh, next week, we're actually rolling out the check-in functionality where you have to check in on the uh, application so that when you get to your desk, you need to check in within an hour or the desk is released because there's a number of sectors that some of the sectors are kind of a little bit more, uh, they, ha they don't have as much of a space constraint. Other places, it's a big fight every day for, for space uh, just because of who's coming in and how many people they have and their space. So uh, they needed the uh, ability to release those desks if people were, were sick and forgot to cancel a reservation or what have you. So uh, we're, we're bringing out the check-in functionality next week before Excellent. we get to the return to office in September because we want to kind of get people used to that before it gets a little bit more. Obviously, with an increase to three days a week, it's going to be a bit more of a challenge with space and things. So I'm sure there's going to be a, a bit of a learning curve with that as we go. Yeah. And did you look at things like neighborhood planning and let people just go to a neighborhood and find a desk versus the one-to-one -one assignment or? Yeah, we have a concept of neighborhoods based on our sectors. So there's a number of sectors within TBS and that's attached to the user's Active Directory. Um, that was as deep as the Active Directory got was basically your sector. So uh, we have the concept of neighborhoods and that's your default um, approach. You can uh, book by neighborhood and it gives you like either a floor or two floors or three floors. And there's sort of a outline space for that neighborhood on the floor. Now, that being said, we didn't tie people to neighborhoods either because sometimes there's cross-functional teams and what have you. So we kept, uh, we have three radio buttons uh, on the WSD. So one is browse by neighborhood, that's your default. Mm -hmm. Then there's browse, uh, browse all, which lets you look at all the floors, uh, except for some that have been uh, cordoned off, like the president of the treasury board's office and stuff that um, they don't want us sitting in. Um, but uh, you can browse pretty much through the, you can sit wherever you want. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just, you're encouraged to sit in your neighborhood, but there are tiger teams and things of, of people that are working uh, across sectors that may want to sit together and collaborate that we didn't want to stop. So we 
have to browse all button and that lets you book anywhere. And um, we also have a, a browse uh, by person. So you can find, if you're collaborating with a teammate, you can find where, uh, you know, uh, Scott Fuller is sitting today and you can go book next to the, the desk next to you and uh, collaborate that way. So you can browse by person as well, if, if that's something that you wanted to do. So it gives people a lot of flexibility and it, it's worked out great. Excellent, great. So um, we did get a, a question here from some of the folks online. One of them was, um, was it hard to get the mobile app approved? So you mentioned people are using mobile. Yeah, uh, no, we, we actually, the mobile app uh, was something that uh, Shared Services Canada is the um, IT provider for uh, the government of Canada. Um, so a lot of our services are actually provided through shared services. And um, one of those is actually the phones uh, are pretty much all owned and managed by shared services. And they had already, because of the large contract that had been done with ServiceNow, they had already um, basically gone through the uh, security and, and what have you of the, the mobile app for ServiceNow. And uh, we worked with the shared services team to release that onto our phones and uh, work with them on the sort of the sign on and the certificates and that type of thing. They gave us a UAT phone that we could, um, that was sort of firewalled off on a test instance that we could test everything to make sure all our certificates and that worked. And um, they were actually great to deal with. It was, uh, yeah, it was the, the, the shared services team with the mobile app was, was really great. Excellent, good. So you're way ahead of the curb here. Um, compared to a number of the the folks on the call here who are basically just starting to react to this recent announcement. What would you recommend that that they go out and do? If they're going to go do something tomorrow, like where do I, where do I start? What do I do? <laughs> um, <clears throat> I, I think the biggest thing is is if you're going to start, your your first step, I think, is to look at your floor plans and your your configuration of your your offices and everything and make sure you've got a solid reflection of um, be it either an AutoCAD design or PDFs of all your floor plans and that they actually bear a semblance of reality to what you have on the ground and and start preparing people uh, get your comms get your communications your change management uh, stuff in place to get people ready for the change that's coming um you know make sure all the desks are in in tip-top shape and everything so that there's as much there's as little noise as possible when this when this happens um because you don't want broken monitors or people coming into a desk that they booked and there's no monitors there um a lot of that stuff is is not even related to the software it's like getting ahead of the what's happening then I would say it's 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 basically looking at how do you want to use the, the the tool? Do you want to book just desks? Do you want to book meeting rooms and desks? How is that going to work out for you? How do people do that task today? We basically didn't look at meeting rooms because so much of the task was tied to Outlook mm -hmm. and um, the, the, that it was just the experience of sending people to two different places to, to book a meeting room and um, what have you was, was going to be probably too much of a, a pill for people to swallow. So we just stuck with uh, offices and, and desks. But those are questions that you have to ask yourself. Like, you know, there is integration with Outlook and uh, and the, the, the tool. It's just it, it didn't really work in our situation it might in the future like you know we're still always evolving and assessing things but that's the sort of questions that you need to ask yourself it's, it's how are we booking this what about offices and touchdown spaces like you know are executives going to get an office and only executives can book there or is it going to be pretty much open game or is it you know anyone that's sort of less than a senior director or an adm gets an office that type of idea it's it's almost more change management than it is software design and architecture and stuff. The tool itself is actually not that difficult to implement. 
um, keep it as much out of the box as you can. That's what we did. And um, yeah, it's, it, it was a good experience. Good. I mean, I do like the fact that you guys kept the initial use case quite simple. Yeah. Like it's desk and office booking. You didn't try to blend with Outlook. Um, and then for everybody else, you'll see as we go through the demo, there are a lot more capabilities there. Um, but I think, Andrew, in your case, you, you took a good approach of start simple, start clean. Um, let's get through the change management of that before you begin to bring in more. Yeah, it's it's a lot for people to take on board, and we wanted it to be kind of as as minimal in, as minimally invasive as possible, so that there wouldn't be too much uh, pushback. Yeah. So the next step that a lot of our customers have matured into once they get sort of the the desk and office booking in place and and adopted is how do I actually shift from looking at my reservations to looking at actual occupancy and whether they take badge data or they have counting sensors, whatever it might be. Have you begun to look at that so you can kind of see, measure true utilization versus expected, you know, reservations? Yeah, I, I think it's one of those things that, you know, like we discovered with the 30 days, um, uh, the, there are uh, of bookings, there, there are ways, uh, a lot of people are very creative about how they gain systems and figure out how they want to use things. Um, we're going to be using the check-in functionality to see how that works for us. But even, even that, when you think about it, someone asked me the question the other day, if you get a, a notification on ServiceNow and it says check-in, if you're at home, what's to stop you from reserving the desk and just checking in? Mm -hmm. Nothing really. And I was just kind of, I hadn't thought of it before. And I was like, oh my God, uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I guess there's nothing that would stop you from doing that. So in our case, we're, we're basically looking at a number of different data points for, you know, trying to get a true picture of occupancy. Uh, one of the things that we're looking at mostly is, is actually one of the, the truest tests is IP addresses. And, and where people are, are logging in, like we're using some of the, looking at some of the network information and uh, seeing where people are logging in from. And, but even that, you know, it's, it's, it's a number of different data points like badge swipes, um, service now. We're, we're not down to the point where we're reporting on people's names or anything. Like we haven't gotten to that point. It's, it's most of our data is still done by sector. And, you know, where are the linking that to ServiceNow, badge swipes, um, some of the computer information that we have as far as IP addresses and stuff. I mean, we're not trying to spy on people. We're just trying to figure out who's where and, and, and what's the utilization. And, you know, the more data you have, the more you can sort of figure out if you're looking. It's like polling in politics, right? Do I have the right polling sample? Do I, am I talking to the right people? Are they just playing me on the phone and, and just having a laugh or are they giving me real information? So it's, it's the yeah. type of thing that you just get more data and try and figure out what the truth is probably somewhere in the middle. <laughs> yeah, no, it's an area that um, can get quite sophisticated and you have to decide why am I doing this? I think, especially when it comes to collecting data around occupancy, you really need to have an outcome in mind before you start yeah. doing it. Um, we've seen customers do everything from when I badge in in the morning that automatically checks me in for all my reservations, whether it's a desk or an office or a room. Um, I've seen other people that have QR codes on desk and I have to scan the QR code to show that I'm there. That's an easy way to do a check-in. Um, yeah, that, that's one way to avoid the, that check-in uh, at home thing with, with the check-in uh, feature. Um, that, that was one of the things that we're looking at that we may move to. But. Yep. Um, so, and again, lots of ways to game the system there. I've seen, yeah. I've seen one customer, the, all the employees took pictures of the barcode on the desk and then they would <laughs> scan the picture from the home. So. Exactly. <laughs> There's a lot of Lex Luthors out there that seem to be evil geniuses that uh, want to uh, figure out a way around things. <laughs> right. So anyway, I hope for everyone out there, um, 
listening to Andrew and what his journey has been like has been helpful. Uh, any kind of last words of advice, Andrew, you have for your colleagues out there before we move into a, a demonstration here? No, I, I'd say uh, I, I pretty much uh, mentioned that it's 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 more of a change management and communications issue than it is a software issue. Um, we kept things as out of the box as possible, and that made the uh, solution quite a pleasant one to implement. Um, you know, there's there's always various issues with with any install, but this one was one of the smoother ones that we've done. And um, it's because we kept it simple and, um, you know, it, it, it's uh, don't underestimate the amount of change management and communications you're going to need. Yeah, good. So we did get a couple more questions and I do want to make sure we take as much time. Um, you are, like I say, joined by all the attendees, our colleagues of yours in Canada. Um, they're all facing similar challenges. So I'm going to make sure we answer all these um, the first one is, would Treasury Board be willing to share best practices with other departments? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, reach out to me. I'm a member of the Community of Practice on ServiceNow. Um, we've established a Community of Practice for the ServiceNow for the Government of Canada. So we're setting up um, meetings. Uh, it's on the GC Exchange. Uh, there's a Teams channel on there. You can ask to join there. Uh, you can send me an email, um, andrew.gall at tbs-sct.gc.ca. Um, we'd be happy to chat with you and help you through any issues that you might need. Great. And the one more question is, what were the challenges you encountered during the implementation and how difficult slash easy was training onboarding the stakeholders? Um, Honestly, training in that we we kept it to videos. Um, we did uh, narrated uh, videos. We have a, a pretty good team here that uh, does uh, some work on um, recorded videos, and we did that as basically a how-to videos. Um, it's a simple enough application that the how-to videos seem to get us the biggest bang for our buck, and it, it, it worked quite well. Um, lesson learned. I, I think uh, it, with implementation of that, obviously from a Government of Canada perspective, um, we had some uh, hurdles with accessibility and uh, French, but um, honestly that was uh, like last year. So even in that time that the tool has, has grown quite a bit, uh, we actually gave a lot of feedback on, on some of the French uh, language uh, things to ServiceNow and they incorporated it really quickly. And accessibility the same way, uh, we had a great experience with that where we found about 14 issues, uh, like I said, about a year or two ago. And uh, we talked to them and other softwares, I'm used to sort of having a fight with the vendors saying, you know, what do you mean it? This isn't an issue, this is your issue. And it's like, no, it's an issue. And I talked to ServiceNow and um, it was like, oh yeah, no, those are issues. We've identified those and we've got them fixed in the next release. And we were all kind of in a meeting going, really? Okay. Um, it was a different experience and not one that we've, we've had before, but it was, uh, it was great. And, and it was, it was true. The next release we had, uh, we didn't do it right away. We waited uh, a month or two to stabilize. And, and then on the next release after go live, we uh, fixed all the outstanding ac accessibility issues with the next release, uh, which at the time I think was Utah. And um, yeah, it was, it was fixed. So that, that, that was, we did have a couple of things with French language and, um, uh, accessibility, but like I said, I think we've found a lot of those, um, and uh, they've they've been addressed, and uh, that that was our experience. So, um, you know, I think if you do it now, it's probably going to be a lot better. Yeah, excellent. Um, and we didn't get this question, but it's probably worth noting. Did you have a partner help with the implementation here? Did you do it all on your own, or how was that approached? Uh, no, we had a partner in uh, in uh, in Ottawa, a partner with, uh, called Optobia, and um, we had uh, the help of their consultants to um, actually it was pretty much one consultant um, with uh, occasional help uh, 
from uh, from one others, and uh, and ServiceNow actually there was there was some ServiceNow corporate folks. Uh, Mark Duran was a great help, and uh, and Russell Sparks, and um, they they were they were a great help with us, and um, and Octavia yeah they they were uh, they were good help for us. And you said it took you roughly six months. Do you think that would go faster for some of the other agencies here? Uh, I know it has gone faster because EDC was um, an arm's length agency, uh, Export and Development Canada, and uh, they used our footprint um, to accelerate from six months to three months. So they did their WSD implementation in three months based on how we did it. And um, I think they had the help of Octavia as well. And um, they had, um, uh, they'd halved it basically uh from six to three months nice all right everybody there's your challenge if you start tomorrow june 28th <laughs> good um so i'm gonna bring some slides back up here so thank you very much andrew if you don't mind sticking around for maybe a few more questions that pop up but we are gonna move into the demo section here hopefully everybody can see the screen there So I want to spend just a little bit of time on a couple of slides up front, um, and then we will get into a live demo with Grace. But as as Andrew mentioned, you know he's been using a product called Workplace Service Delivery from ServiceNow. The focus of that product and the challenges we're trying to help our customers solve is is just what we've been talking about. How do I get people back into the office and have that be a really good experience for them? You'll see as we go through some of the overview and demo, there are lots of other things we do around helping optimize the space, the efficiency of how it's run and things like that. Um, there's other experiences for visitors and technicians and people like that. But again, I like what Andrew has done is he stayed very focused on his problem, which is I've got more people than desk and I need to manage people coming in and make sure that that's, that's an efficient process. You'll see um, the application sort of has, has two halves to it. We'll describe it on the left-hand side is a lot of what we've been talking about. This is really focused on the workplace experience for my employees and my teams, making sure that when they come in, they have a place to sit, they can communicate, you know, collaborate with their colleagues, um, and that that is a, a safe environment for them. On the right hand side, I don't think Andrew talked about any of this, um, but we do do space planning. Um, we mentioned floor plans. So there are things like indoor wayfinding. There is space management. If you want to begin to, to, to basically, there's, there's views around how do I begin to plan my neighborhoods and the number of people in those neighborhoods and do I have the capacity in the different spaces I have. Um, and then a lot of capabilities around the maintenance of what assets are in the workplace, what maintenance plans do we have on those? Um, what do I do when something breaks and how do I get that fixed? And then an area that we've had a lot of progress on in the last um, several months here, sort of on the bottom half of the screen here, which is we do bring in, or we can bring in a lot of data from around the, the workplace, whether it's just badging data, whether it's occupancy data, energy data, and we begin to leverage that data. Um, we apply a lot of our machine learning capabilities and AI to that so that we can improve experiences for users and optimize the space. So, so that's the main um, product, you know, in terms of its entirety. What I'd like to do is hand off to Grace here. I am going to stop sharing. She's gonna take us through a live demonstration as we go through that demo, um, Andrew, feel free to sort of call out any things that, you know, this is the form that we all use every day or feel free to, to jump in um, and, and, and sort of map what people are seeing to your experience. Okay, Grace, it's all yours. Awesome, thanks, Scott. Hi, everyone. Like Scott said, my name is Grace George. I'm a solution consultant here at ServiceNow, and we're going to walk through workplace service delivery and what this can look like for your employees. So here at ServiceNow, our goal is to really streamline processes for employees, make it easy for them to self-serve and make them excited to come back into the office. 
So we are logged in here as Maria Davies. She is one of our employees and she is a manager here within the organization. Maria has one place to go for everything she needs within the organization. This is her employee center portal. Like I said, this is consolidating all the information for her, whether that's from the HR perspective, the IT perspective, even things like the workplace. Um, so this is really giving her that one single place to go and start her day. It's personalized to her who she is as a user with things like targeted messaging and banners. She can see all of her tasks, notifications. But what I know we really want to highlight today is employees are coming back into the office. They're going to have questions. They're going to want to be able to book spaces. They're going to want to be able to see what is in the office these days and how do I get around so right from Employee Center, Maria can come in and do things like book conference rooms, but she has an office microsite, and this is really the one place she can go to view absolutely everything about her office. This is going to be tailored to her and where she is located, so she has all the most up-to-date information. So Maria is currently working out of our Hudson office. So she has all of the building information. If she were to be traveling and maybe she was going to be in California in this case, um, but she could be anywhere within the, the globe. She can see those other offices, the locations, and easily drill in to view those details as well. But able to see the tailored information for her space and office. Same as the main employee center, she can come in and book those different space types, whether it's conference rooms, desks. We even support things like lockers and parking spaces. I know a lot of my customers have also included things for something like a mother's room. If someone's coming back from maternity leave and needs that mother's room space, giving eligibility to some of those spaces as well um, to let Maria come in and reserve those. But her office microsite is really highlighting a lot of the exciting things that are going to be happening in this space, whether it's a summer barbecue, news or events, um, giving everything to her in this one central location. I know sometimes as employees are coming back into the office, they have questions on, you know, this isn't working or, you know, I'm missing a chair or this is broken. This is the same place that Maria can go to submit any of those general requests. She can just type in what she needs help with, select the location. If she was working from a particular desk, we could pre-populate a lot of that information for her, really making it a seamless process for employees to submit those requests and tickets. But then I know one of the things that's going to be really important as employees are coming back is being able to collaborate with other people in the workspace. We want to make sure they are getting the most out of their time in the office and the days that they're spending in the office are going to be the most beneficial. So we have the ability um, to showcase employee presence. So this is where Maria can come in and set what days is she planning to come into the office? If this is a set schedule, she knows she's always going to be working Mondays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. She can set this here and leave it. If this is something that's going to be changing, she can come in once a week and maybe update, hey, next week I'm planning to come in Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. This is where employees can come in and set those days and then add collaborators as well. So who does Maria need to work with or collaborate with? on a weekly basis, she can come in and add those uh, individuals here and then be notified what days everyone is coming in. So she can really make the most of that time in the office. Here she can see, you know, 33% of her collaborators are gonna be in on Thursday, but 100% of her collaborators are coming in on Friday. Right now she's set to be in the office on Thursday. So maybe she wants to flip flop that. Maybe she can go remote on Thursday and then come into the office on Friday. So that's going to be um, more beneficial for her to be in when everyone else is in. And to make it really easy for her, she can also come in and initiate that reservation if maybe she wants to book a conference room so they can all get together and collaborate on a project. So this is a great way for employees to come in and make the most of their time here within the space. Sometimes I get a question of, you know, we want to make sure employees know that this is um, a capability that they can set their presence, that we can maximize the time that they're in the office. I've seen some of my customers push out notifications via email, um, a push notification, a text, however employees prefer to receive those notifications at the beginning of the week saying, hey, 
go in and check out your presence dashboard. Did you know 100% of your collaborators are going to be in on Thursday? Do you want to adjust your schedule? So just making sure that they know that this is out there and we can really maximize that time. So if Maria did want to go ahead and book a conference room, um, she can come in and select what building. Once again, this is going to populate to the one that she works out of. But if she were traveling or needed to book another space, she could go ahead and select that location. What floor, how long she's going to need this space for. Is it something that's going to be all day, part of the day, um, or even in something like 30 minute or hour time blocks? The solution is going to pre-populate or suggest one of the spaces to her. But she does have the ability to come in and view that map to see what are all the open spaces, which one's going to be the best for me. So this is available to her here on a map view, which really makes it easy for employees to see exactly where the space is and choose the one that's going to be most beneficial for them. She is able to see which ones are already booked. They're highlighted in red, so she can't go in and book those spaces. But then she can come in and see the ones in green of these are available for the times that you need. Um, and they can accommodate the amount of people you need. So if she had needed a meeting room for 15 people, it's going to make sure that she has the capacity for those um, individuals. She gets a quick highlight of what is all included in this room, as well as a preview of what the space looks like. And then she can go ahead and continue with her reservation. So this is where she can just to, sorry, yeah. just jump in for one second, just because I know a lot of what we talked about was the desk booking. I just want to make sure everybody understands what we just showed around conference rooms also applies to desk. You'd see which ones were booked and which ones were not booked and things like that. You can you can drill right down into that map view to see individual desk places too. Good, Absolutely. sorry. No, you are all good. Absolutely. The desks are very important. And I know a lot of our customers have even um, implemented some functionality to be able to see if employees are just sitting at a desk as opposed to actually having that space reserved. So having the real-time occupancy tracking to know which ones are available and which ones employees can go in and, and reserve as well. But continuing with her reservation, this is where she can add in some of those additional details, whether she's going to be collaborating and inviting other coworkers or even external visitors. She can add in those visitors within the reservation adding in additional services if she needs, you know, equipment or support. I know a lot of the times when I have a, a big meeting, it's always beneficial to have AV support there 15 minutes before the reservation starts, just to make sure everything is getting up and running and working as it's supposed to be so our meeting can start on time. So she can go ahead and add in those additional supports and services and then go ahead and submit that reservation. So once again, really easy for Maria to make those reservations, um, add in additional details and see everything that's available all from that map view. Now, like Andrew was saying, a lot of our employees are checking their reservations from mobile. They're making sure they actually reserve this space um, before they come into the office. So Maria has this same functionality available to her all from her mobile device. So when she logs in via mobile, she can go ahead and view that same employee center portal with her targeted banners and information, easy way to come in and view her reservations or even make a new reservation. So once again, she can come in and reserve those lock lockers, parking spaces, mother's rooms, desks, whatever it may be. The system is going to recommend one of those spaces to her and she can go ahead and reserve that location. But one of the other great uh, features that we've seen a lot of our employees utilize, as Scott was saying, was being able to scan QR codes. Sometimes employees come into the office and they're walking around and they say, this desk is great. This is where I want to sit. Or this conference room has an amazing view. This is where I want my next team meeting to be. All Maria has to do is scan the QR code that's going to be on the outside of that uh, conference room or at that desk. And she can go ahead and get a preview of what that space looks like, the capacity, and easily go ahead and reserve that space. So real-time reservations for employees, no matter where or when they're working. And as we were also saying, if employees are coming into the office, and maybe this is their first time in one of these spaces, they want to go ahead and get directions. How do I get to this location? How do I navigate throughout the building? Right from their mobile device, they can see a real-time view of the map. 
and get those directions from different spaces. So maybe Maria was working at one of these desks. She can get those step-by-step -step directions throughout the building. And even if she were navigating between floors, being directed to elevators or stairs, as you can see here in the bottom right corner, this is the accessibility route. So we're making sure that Maria is only taking routes that are in that accessible mode. If she were not needing the accessible directions, we could go ahead and route her to stairs as well to make sure, you know, if she was transitioning between floors, she can take stairs or elevators. Um, so having those options available to her as well, but seeing those step-by-step -step instructions. Yeah. Grayson, so, I'm gonna interrupt you again. Sorry. Absolutely. There was, a, there was a question in the chat to Andrew about whether he had rolled out indoor maps and were there any challenges in that? Andrew, you're on mute. Thank you. Hey, Andrew, you are muted. There you go. Sorry about that. I yeah. lost my window. Uh, no, we hadn't. Uh, we hadn't uh, brought in. Uh, I mean, we're using the the map, um, the floor plans. Um, but as far as uh, we have all the desks uh, mapped out from the PDF floor plans, um, I'm not sure what they mean differently from an indoor mapping. Basically, we we see similar uh, to what is on the screen currently. We have our desks available, and if a desk is available, it's green. If a desk has been booked, it has a, basically a do not enter sign there. Good. Okay. And so you have... Similar interface to what Grace has been showing um, that yeah. you're using at the desk level and people can, can see that. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Grace, please. Perfect. So the last thing we're going to touch on here today, we're actually going to switch over and log into one of our building administrators. So we are logged in here now as Amelia, and then this is her workplace central. This is the place she starts her day. This is where she does all of her work out of. And once again, this is tailored to her and what she needs from a building management perspective. So when she first logs in, she has a few dashboards available to her. All of these dashboards are configurable, so we can really tailor them to exactly what your organization needs and what is gonna be most beneficial for your team to track and monitor. So this is where Amelia can come in and look at things like our capacity, um, our utilization, what is our, our spaces are being utilized, what days do we see a lot of our employees coming in on and which ones are busier? Um, are we using more rooms, workspaces, desks, um, conference rooms, whatever that may be, taking a look at those different uh, space types and then even department based, you know, what departments are coming in more, um, which ones are using more spaces. So having that breakdown of the different areas and then touching on one other one, occupancy is a, a big focus right now as well. What is our total headcount? How many employees are coming in on an average day to day basis? This is looking at things um, like the integrations with badge scanners or monitoring QR code scans. However, we want to go ahead and track that occupancy, but making sure that we are staying within uh, that range and our spaces are being utilized as well. So a number of different dashboards here for Am Amelia to go ahead and monitor the different spaces. Now, as we go ahead and dive into things like our layouts, I know we were talking about, you know, neighborhoods and allocating spaces based on things like departments or um, those different attributes. So Maria can go ahead and view her different buildings and she can look at the stack plan here to see these are the different floors we're occupying. Here's where we currently have um, our different teams sitting. So she can go ahead and see all the space details. Um, what's the total capacity? How many individuals do we have? What floors have some additional room and can we move people around? Um, she can also view this via the floor plan, which is very beneficial because I know some people like to visualize things in different ways. So looking here at all the different floors, she can go ahead and see exactly where those spaces are allocated. In this case, it's by department. But she can go ahead and view these spaces by department, cost center, neighborhood. And neighborhood doesn't just have to be, you know, um, Sometimes we see it more that department base, but a lot of my customers sometimes make neighborhoods that are quiet zones or more of that um, 
you know, conversational based working environment. So you can have two different neighborhood types for the people that like to come in the office and, and have that quiet space versus the employees that like to come in and uh, chit chat a little more. So able to set those different um, viewing types. This is also where she can come and see those different allocations. So if we go ahead and flip to one of our floors that has more desks, she can easily see who is allocated to the different spaces, initiate any of those moves um, or changes. So here we have a number of individuals assigned to these desks. She can go ahead and select one of those individuals, see who they are, and even initiate that move to a different area um, or even building as well. So seamless way for her to go in and make some of those changes within the building and the space plans. Have we had any questions come through chat so far, Scott? Are we looking good? Oh, we're looking good. All right. And the last thing we'll touch on here today, some of that scenario planning. We know that you have your building set up. You have um, some of these desks assigned. But what if we're making changes? What if we're consolidating locations? What if we're expanding locations? What if we just want to review where our employees are sitting and how we can optimize some of these spaces? Scenario planning is a great tool for Amelia to come in and look at the different floors. Maybe we want to consolidate. If you would have noticed on our initial building, we had people kind of sitting on a lot of different floors. The, the areas are not really grouped together. So what if we want to bring everyone from those departments all into the same location? This is where she can see based on the different floors where users are sitting and easily drag and drop to move people around. If we wanna bring everyone from user experience all to the fourth floor, so they're working together, they're collaborating. This is where she can come in and make those changes, visualize those here within the stack plan or even the floor map as well. And then be able to see exactly what would happen from a space and user perspective to go ahead and deploy this plan. We support approvals around these different scenario plans. So Amelia can come in and make all of these changes, review things, but nothing is actually going to happen until she goes ahead and publishes this plan. It's gonna route through those approvals and then we can move into the steps to actually deploy this plan. So a great way for her to come in and just review what is happening from that scenario perspective. So Scott, I'll see if we have any additional questions here. I know we wanted to save about five minutes at the end here for any final question and answer and make sure we have everything addressed. Okay. I'm going to share as well here. Okay. Great. So thank you for that, Grace. That was um, an excellent overview. Uh, I'm going to pick on Andrew one last time because Grace took us through a pretty um, quick overview of a lot of capabilities. Um, you, again, focused on keeping it simple and keeping it um, the least amount of change. Any comments on the, on like, <laughs> from what you saw versus what you did? Yeah, actually, that's what I was writing down. There's some some stuff on the uh, the dashboards that we'll probably start looking at as, as that becomes a bit more of a, uh, a pressing issue for the occupancy dashboard and some of those analytics uh, dashboards. Uh, we might look into uh, some more of that, I think. Uh, the other thing that looked quite uh, useful would be that presence, uh, mm -hmm. the workplace presence, where it shows who's in, where you can set your days yeah. and um, who's gonna be in on those days. I think that's something that a lot of people would find useful as you're trying to sort of sort out uh, maybe a t you know a team event or collaboration or whatever it would kind of make your life a little bit easier i think that looks like something that we might explore a little bit um it, it it looks it looks quite good and actually someone had a suggestion here that i know one of our resources reached out to ServiceNow and suggested to the product owner there that um, your default work day um when we book um a recurring uh desk booking you basically have to pick a time mm -hmm. and we just kind of went with eight to four and and uh, a lot of people go nine to five or seven thirty to three thirty or whatever um it would be a good thing to be able to set within your profile in service now that i typically work eight to four or seven thirty yeah. to three thirty and then when you're booking your recurring meetings, it defaults to what your 
profile says is your your default work day then the product owner at service now i know he was quite he thought it was a great idea so i think he's got it on the roadmap actually for for wsd because it seemed like a, a a neat thing that was kind of simple but would, would be useful for a lot of people with knowing yeah. who what their hours are sort of yeah we do have we are putting a lot of focus on understanding more about you and what your behaviors and preferences are so that we can um, use that to make the process of booking a space or a desk yep. as easy as possible for you. Simpler, yeah. um, we do have more features coming out around just doing it verbally. You know, I'm going into the office on Wednesday, please book my favorite desk. Um, and it just does it for you versus having to bring up forms and clicks and things like that. So um, we need to wrap up here. There is a QR code on your screen. Um, if you wanna to share today's session with any of your colleagues, you can scan that QR code and later today, there will be a link to the recording from today's webinar. We appreciate everybody's time. Andrew, can't thank you enough. You're a great customer, um, user of workplace service delivery, my product, which we, are, we love and appreciate your time and, and sharing your experience here.